I haven't fished in Virginia in quite a while. So I'm just passing through. Decided to make a little stop on the, the bridge. Back here I've got an assortment of goodies. Really didn't know what to pack this time of year. From, you know, the usual flounder stuff. I've got some fiddler crabs back there. Honestly, if I'm gonna focus on anything, it's actually gonna be flounder. Because I can bring those home. Water's 81 out here, so it's warm for this region too. So, you know what that means. Probably tough fishing, but you know what? Let's make the most of it. Hopefully have a good day of fishing. I see them way out there. Way out there. Push out here a little bit. We've seen some surface life, so then maybe drift back to the bridge. Just goofing around, man. Nothing serious. Pink silver? Yeah, small one. Might be throwing too big. He's leading. You want him? No, nah, I'm good. I'm gonna try to avoid dragging the Akano's array bait. There we go. Vertical. Catch my own, I don't need a pity fish. <laughs> Too bad. Spanish back. We're just chasing some Spanish mackerel around. Ran over a little bit of structure to jig on. All right, so all I'm doing here is I'm taking my paddle tail, just glopping it up with some, some Procure. to be a few here. Someone's coming home with dinner tonight. Yeah. So we got some Spanish jumping all around us and there's like some like real crumbly stuff. I was like, I think there should be flounder here. So I put my four and a half inch paddle tail down there. We're getting bopped by some small fish out here, but I think we got our first keeper flounder. So 16 and a half here, right? I believe so. It might be 15. That one looks like 19. All right, some fun fishing. 19 inch flounder. So first one. Gonna set up, do another drift there. All right, first keeper there. All right, so Virginia has summer flounder. Um, I, I wonder, maybe there are some southern flounder here, but these are summer flounder we're catching. So let me get them on ice and set up for another drift. Just drifting up, long drifting on some structure. So let's see if we get another one. All right, let's move on. Maybe come back to this zone. It's fishy, but just gave one, which is definitely better than none. But. Don't want to waste the whole day here. There's a lot, a lot of stuff we can go fish out here right now. Right, I'm going to drop a crab here. I saw some life that looked potentially sheep's head or trigger fish. Let's see if I can stay on this spot. I get blown off by the crab.
Go toadfish to me. Saw a few fish on that hump there. Drop the one ounce bottom sweeper down. Fish was on the bottom. Just me being a kook. Dropping a crab down. I'm gonna release the sheep's head. A little too large for me. I do prefer to put these bigger ones back anyway. It doesn't want to unfold for a shot. So probably 23, somewhere around there, 24 maybe. But beautiful one. Honestly, to me, it's all about finding a nice drift. 25, 30 feet, somewhere around there. I want that one mile an hour drift. Spanish mackerel, for sure. Slammed on the retrieve, something with teeth. <laughs> Got a submarine coming through, man. It's really cool. I think a lot of these are the schoolies, though. Dolan found some, you know, three to four pounders here. Maybe, I don't know, I'm gonna release them for now. Maybe towards the end of the day, I wanna, I'll keep one, but honestly, I have the, the flounder fever in my brain right now. Catch a couple more here and move on probably. Maybe try some deeper stuff back towards the, the beach. You sight fish an oyster toad for us? <laughs> nice. I don't know what I'll do with a nice one. Tempting, tempting to keep one of these, but they don't freeze that well, in my opinion. So I kind of just like fresh for dinner and then. Yeah, they're uh, very, very good fresh. Yeah, but these are the size to keep these these ones. Oh, I promise you, the ones I'm looking at swimming around aren't this Toe tog season open? Yeah. It is. That's what I want. I'm kind of spoiled on the sheep's head where I live, so. But slow day. There's life out here. It's just, it's one of those things you just gotta grind and know how to cover water. It seemed like I started off pretty good covering water and then I hit the, the lull and now it's like, uh, I don't know. My man, the toad. It's my man. If you let that guy bite you, it's gonna be the worst day of your, it's gonna be the worst day in a while. It'll crush your fingernails. It's pretty, it's pretty brutal. Oh, I saw some life, I did. They could just be big sheep heads, but I don't think so. I see them now. Yeah, I got them under me, whatever this is. Not a doubt. So, uh, it might be Spanish. A couple yeah, there were some nice Spanish ones. There's been, I mean, there's just been all kinds of crab. Whatever it is, eats a crab. <laughs> is it, is it I don't know, but it eats crabs. 
<laughs> Might not eat a jig, but it's gonna eat your fiddler crab. Sheep's head. You see a sheep's head. Yep. Well, now you know. a brown color right now. It has to match the crab. No, I think those drum are heavy movers. Yeah, especially. I know, I'm gonna piggyback and off live scope. I don't know how I feel about this, but. So at this point, my camera equipment was overheating consistently. Nolan here who competitively bass fishes was using live scope or forward facing sonar. It was an extremely impressive technology and it was the first time I got to see it in action firsthand and I hadn't really formed an opinion on it. That being said, I'll enjoy my time seeing someone have success with it and will always be humbled by its capabilities as I was today. I'm here for the flounder. I'm staying for the drum. <laughs> slightly, slightly better about Bringing me over. Maybe I get one more. I was hoping it was going to be a black yeah. couldn't catch it. Really yeah. All right, well, it's a nice red drum right there. <laughs> Found a lot of fish on these rocks laid up, but they're being pretty, uh, pretty fickle. It's interesting. I, I, I haven't really formed much of an opinion on live scope, but seeing it in action, it's just like it's a combination of that's amazing, but also like, wow, I don't know how I gotta. Yeah, it's it's amazing to see it, but at the same time, like. I don't know if I want it. Maybe I just want to fish somebody next to somebody who has it. All right, headed in now. Wind kicked up, but I think we have plenty of action. It is a long day out here. I fish mostly jigs and crabs. One flounder for dinner, so I'm happy with that. Had a lot of action with the sheeps, reds, mid-August fishing, so you can't beat that. All right, I'm currently back home in North Carolina. Uh, I lost a lot of footage. Why did I lose a lot of footage? Um, camera overheated figured it might be interesting to talk a little bit about live scope too so i'm gonna run up fish these sandbars i'm honestly out here looking for pompano for an hour or two this morning last year pompano were kind of everywhere this year the water's a lot dirtier in a lot of spots so you know what no one was fishing with live scope uh, i thought it was pretty cool to actually see it in action and used in saltwater environment but i was really thinking about it i don't know if i want to put it on my kayak it's cool but at the same time i'm like I don't know if I want that extra technology. Is that going to make me enjoy fishing more? You know, these days, I wonder what's your opinion on it? Uh, live scope and saltwater. Um, will it enhance the experience of being out here? Yeah, this, cur this current's whipping. I want to kind of target the area around these shoals, though. That's where Pompano hang out, and that's where I've caught them in the past. So, let's see. Ocean's angry today. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna work these shoals and the edges of them. All right, on the, on the noodle. I think that was a ladyfish. Okay, there we go. Back in the inlet. Yeah, I knew I'd get a couple of these if anything. Um, you know, even if I'm not gonna eat them, they'll go to bait, bait use in the crab trap. You just gotta make sure he's 12 inches, right? That's the minimum size. Yeah, he's about 14. <laughs> The ones in the inlet do run that one pound class pretty typically. But these are pretty good to eat anyway. Yeah. A little bit better than bluefish for sure, so let's get them on ice. All right. I'm looking for the just some funny stuff that sometimes comes through these waters this time of year. Me personally, I enjoy the pursuit. So when I skunk, hey, it's fine. I learned, I saw, seen a couple of these little Spanish mackerel porpoising out of the water. I was throwing top water for about an hour. Just had one or two small raises. Now I switched up to that micro jig. That is the Major Craft 10 gram.
It's a pompano. Heck yeah. <laughs> we got the right dinner. All right. This is on those micro jigs, the, the major craft one. All right. It's not big, but hey, I'm going to take it. <laughs> Shallow, six feet of water. Got such light line. Got like the biggest noodle rod out there. I'm gonna lose them if I swing them. Yeah. I'm such a nerd. Excited about a pound and a half pompano on a, a micro jig. It ain't much, but yeah, major craft. 10 grams, slow jig. They're worth it. Mix it up a little bit, catch something kind of funky, you know what I'm saying? So, pompano. Jack? Oh, ladyfish. Yeah, ladyfish, jacks, they all hang out kind of together. Certain types of water draw them in. Ladyfish. Ooh. Broke off the the hook on that. It was a ladyfish though. I just switched to the pompano jig now. Let's see if we do any better with that. That one, this one will sink easier for me too. That's the big difference. Oh no, we got bit off. We got bit off. <laughs> yeah, live scope. What do you think? I, th I think my bite's done here. I didn't have much of a bite, honestly. Just jumped about half a dozen ladyfish. Lost one or two Spanish mackerel and got the pompano. At the same time, trying, right? Just trying. So the other day, too, when I finished up fishing, um, that was probably one of the hottest days to fish. Got to stay hydrated, cold drinks. As that sun's coming out now, as soon as it feels like you need sunblock to put on, put on sunblock, it's probably time to go, and I think that's what I'm going to do today. Check out Nolan's stuff, man. He's a great fisherman. You know, I'm using this new Jigging World Night Ranger Custom. Uh, Mike's built this. This blank is awesome. Just a great kayak rod, and you can obviously get a customized butt length, too, if you want it shorter for a kayak like me, or you can do it longer, too. So let me make a couple more casts. And I think that's all I got here, man. Appreciate everyone for watching. Enjoying a beautiful day. Let me get home before it gets too hot out here. And uh, I'll catch up with you guys on the next video. So things will pick up real soon.